Then you say, where are you getting this knowledge from? I want to read you something. I don't want you to get nervous. I brought out two things. My Bible and my duck calls. Interesting story. The first interview I did for the TV show, they said, you have an interview at 12 o'clock. We'll talk about you know the things that have happened. Well, I brought my duck calls and my Bible. And I sat out. They said, well, what are you going to do with those things? I said, well, you said we were going to have an interview. They said, yeah, why did you bring your Bible and your duck calls? I said, because this is the only two things that I know about. <laughs> I want to read you something that uh, you may find perplexed that's in the Bible. Listen to what God told Noah. Now, for some of you who don't know the story, once upon a time, where we're sitting, where I'm standing, you're sitting, there was water. There was a flood. I have some scientific evidence on my side because some of our scientists, some of the smartest archaeologists and people of our world have found fish fossils in some of the highest mountainous regions of the earth. Now, non-believers say, well, well, that's just an enigma. That's a strange thing. That's, that's an unidentified occurrence. Really? Did they fly up there? Maybe at one time, there was water up there. I just thought I'd give you that for free. I think it backs up what Genesis 8 says about the flood. Listen to what God said after the water went down. The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth. Upon all the birds of the air. Now they were all cooped up in the ark up until this point. Everybody was happy, happy, happy. <laughs> upon every creature that moves along the ground. And upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. You say, okay, I'm not very smart. What does that have to do with the five food groups? God Almighty told Noah, from now on, anything that walks, crawls, flies, or swims, you can kill it and eat it and garnish it with the things that grow. I'm taking that literal. So when people say, well, why in the world are you eating that turkey? Genesis 9. I'm at the top of the food chain and I like it. Peter wrestled with this in Acts chapter 10 as a religious guy. And he was, he was, he was wrestling with it because he just didn't know if it was right or wrong issue. And you remember what God told him? You can talk in here. What did God tell him? What did He tell him? Arise, kill, and eat. He was looking at all these things that walks, crawls, flies, and swims. That's what I'm going with. Now the things that fly, I have to admit, I have a special place in my heart for them. It turns me up. I make duck calls. Now, I told you my priorities. And they were in the right order. But I would call this good, clean fun. That's what this is. Now, a lot of people in the duck call world, they call, and the most, I guess, asked question is they, they buy a call. They're usually from up north. Further north from Kansas. And they say, I put this duck call, and there's something, there's something not right. And now that I've had this call so many times, I usually interrupt them right then. I say, okay, before we go on any farther, turn the call around and open that in. And you'll hear this. Ah! Now we're talking. What we do is, is we try to show wild ducks 
that our decoys are real. That's what we do. It's not contrary to size belief. <laughs> this is not going to hypnotize, mesmerize, and paralyze ducks from way up and bring them in on a string. I got to stop and tell you about size because I know y'all are wondering. <laughs> You know, he smoked about four packs of cigarettes for, you know, many years. And uh, he gets back and he has a heart attack and he almost died. Now, we were duck hunting when this happened. He was like, man, my chest is hurting. I think I had a heart attack. So we said, well, you want us to run you out of here? Or uh, he's like, no, I'm waiting till the hunt's over. <laughs> He goes up to the hospital, oh yeah, he's had a heart attack, open heart surgery. Now I'm going to tell you, he's not real bright, he's funny, but he is tough. <laughs> so I, they told him, he said, look, you got to quit this smoking, you know. I mean, he just had a major heart attack, whatever, and he's like, no, I ain't doing it. Well, here's why he quit smoking. He's deer hunting. Now this is, I'm quoting Sai, all right, so take it for what it's worth. <laughs> he's deer hunting, and we're telling him, don't hunt our stand because it smells like cigarette smoke when you hunt it. And I don't think that's a natural smell for deer. So I was like, hey, let me tell you, boys, something. I was in the stand. He tells a Germany story. A guy took him out there and he's deer hunting. He's sitting there smoking him a Winston. He puffs the smoke out. He hears a sound. He hears... <coughs> well, he thought the God has come back and is trying to get his attention. So I said, I look down and there's a little four-point buck there. Down there. And he said, did, did I... Did what just happened? Did I... What I think just happened, happened. So he blew some more smoke and the smoke went down and, and the deer went... <coughs> But he believes there's a deer in Germany that was choking on his smoke and went back to Egypt. <laughs>